So today we get to take some time and um, talk with Haley Smith. And Haley is in the hospitality industry. And so she's spoken to my management class about hospitality management in the fall. And so I was excited to reach out to her and, and allow her to share with, with the rest of my students. So thank you, Haley, for being with us today. Um, I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. So uh, we just like to start first, as I do with all of these interviews, uh, share a little bit about your high school experience at Marion High School, what you were involved in, and, and kind of tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, so I graduated from Marion High School in 2014. Um, I was very involved with choir and drama. I was on the dance team all four years. I played soccer for a couple of years. I was involved in National Honor Society and Try High Y and French Club and Sign Language and just tried to be a very involved student. Um, I think I was maybe one of 10 students who never did FBLA. Um, okay. so I was a minority in that situation. Um, and, okay. my, um, and my dad was actually my high school principal for almost all four years. So um, that's an interesting fact that's, about me. That puts a different spin on things when you're yes. in high school. Yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Um, and I, I loved my time at Marion High School and all the experiences I had. Well, we, um, you were, yes, I remember you were involved with the Palm team and um, all of their success and um, yes. very involved in the music program here. So, yes. um, so from there, from graduation, mm -hmm. um, what has your career path looked like so far? So after I graduated high school, I went to Murray State University, and um, I've watched a couple of your under, other interviews, and most of them have been like, you know, I knew what I wanted to do, or I changed my major once. That is totally not my story. Um, I think I changed my major four times. That's okay. Um, in high school, I totally was on the track of the medical field. I wanted to be an audiologist. And then I took some classes and I was like, no, nah, not for me. So then I think I did nursing. And one day I came home and had just decided that I was going to do something totally different. And then the next day I changed it again. <laughs> I finally landed on public relations and advertising. Um, and I ended up choosing those because I do love theater and drama. So public relations has that aspect of theater and then advertising is sort of marketing, but less numbers and more of the creative side of things. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so I was very involved as a student. Again, I had two jobs, one on campus at the alumni office on campus. Um, I also worked at Family Video the last two years, so I really got into sales there. Um, I was also in a sorority, Alpha Delta Pi. Um, I had two different internships, one with the football team and one with Walker's Bluff Winery there in Southern Illinois. Mm -hmm. um, and I was also involved in the community theater there. And then I graduated in 2018 with a bachelor's degree. That is, yeah. So it was a very full college experience. I apologize yes. when I made that face. My phone started ringing. I hadn't turned oh, it no. off and I was like, oh, oh. So, well, I wasn't making a face at you. Um, yes. Yeah, so so um upon graduation um you have been working um in the kentucky area correct in paducah yes. Kentucky. um yes. would you like to tell us a little bit about your current position and kind of what your day-to-day -day looks like sure so i am the banquet and event coordinator at the country club of paducah um and as many people have already said there's no real normal day um but before all this happened i generally work um, like a nine to five position and the event world, hospitality world, um, you're always looking ahead and making plans for the future because nobody's going to call you and say, I need to bring 500 people to the club tonight and I need you to feed all those people and have it staffed. Um, so you're always planning ahead. Um, a big part of my job is also graphic design, which I never thought it would be. Um, so I make all the event flyers for the clubhouse um, and I plan everything. So because I work at a smaller club, um, I am the entire event department. Um, so I do everything from planning it to executing it, making sure everything goes okay, greeting the clients when they get there, making sure they have everything they need, and then making sure it goes well 
through the end. Um, and at a lot of places, so if you worked at, you know, a club in Nashville or even the pavilion. So a lot of times they'll have their event coordinator and then they have people below them. So they're event managers who actually stay for the event and run them and make sure they go okay. But because I'm the only one, I do it all. Um, I also do a lot with social media here. We're during this time, especially really getting into social media and seeing what we can do differently to engage members and keep the club at the forefront of their minds. So they're excited to come back when all of this is over. Um, I also do a lot of golf outings because we are um, a golf country club. So that's been something that I never was really involved in. I don't even still know much about golf, but it is what it is. Um, and so, yeah, do a little bit of everything around here. So, um, and you mentioned, you know, that you're trying to keep members engaged right now. Uh -huh. um, and before we start recording, you talked a little bit about how, about how you've had to be creative and yes. come up with things to engage members. So kind of what are, what are some of the things that you've done um, to be proactive about that? Gotcha. So before this started, I my job is to plan personal things for people, you know, meetings, weddings, birthday parties, anniversaries, but I'm also planning club events. So whether that's um, a big 4th of July pool party or we have an event every year called Dueling Pianos where musicians come up. So I'm always trying to find things for members to do here as well. So now I'm trying to find ways to do those events, but online with people. So one of the events I did was a DIY cocktail hour. Um, so me and my dining room manager, we actually went live on Facebook um, and we had sold boxes that had, you know, small amounts of each cocktail and what they needed to make it. And then we just went live and sort of a, here's how you make it and talk to them and allow them to ask questions and enjoy a drink with us as well. That's, that was very creative. Yeah. 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 Um, and so I'm in Kentucky. And so of course the Kentucky Derby is huge here. Um, and this Saturday would actually be the Kentucky Derby, but it's been postponed to, I think, October. Um, so every day this week, I have done a little trivia question to all the members through email um, about the Kentucky Derby. And the first person to answer gets, you know, something special in their family meal on Saturday night. Um, so I've done a couple of kids crafts. So Cinco de Mayo is coming up. Um, I'm doing a DIY paper bag pinata and I bought all the candy and supplies they need. So all they have to do is come pick it up. So I'm, I'm trying to find, you know, different ways to celebrate and do things for them. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Um, so, so as far as, um, if we were in normal circumstances and you were going into work, um, what skill sets do you think are most critical for someone to be successful? in um hospitality management okay. and um kind of to to see themselves advance so i would definitely say your people skills i mean that is my number one job i'm always talking to someone whether it's over the phone or email or meetings um greeting clients and their guests um so that's incredibly important to have both verbal and um, written communication skills i think that's probably for everybody in every circumstance. Um, and then also, I would say graphic design, that's been a big one for me. Um, some places might have a graphic designer, but we don't, so I've taken on that role. Um, definitely organization, because you are working, not only are you working on your events that are happening that day in that moment or that week, but you're also working months in advance. I mean, weddings, especially book probably a year a year and a half in advance so you know you have to make sure you are very organized with your time and everything so you know exactly what's going on because it can be very easy to get overwhelmed mm -hmm. um, so that's something that I I still work on today even though I'm in the profession sure so and I'm sure that um, you have to have a a certain amount of ability just to kind of roll with the punches or to think on your feet or to put oh, out fires, absolutely. you know, because invariably, I mean, just even planning like small FBLA events around here, like 
something will go wrong, something does yes. go wrong, or maybe yes. not wrong, but just not as planned. Yes. You know, sometimes it turns out better than what you think, you know, yes. but, but you know, there's those moments of panic and you just have to, you are the yes. one in charge. So, yes. yeah. Um, so, I mean, people forget to tell you things like, oh, my guest has an allergy and you have to immediately on the spot fix that. Um, or they have more guests come than you set up for. So you have to be prepared to set up in the midst of 50 people going through a buffet and sitting down and being able to set up another table for guests who mm -hmm. didn't RSVP, you know, things like that. So that's okay. another skill set. After planning my daughter's wedding, this is just, I'm just going to get on a soapbox for a second. Please RSVP people. It's not that hard. Like you yes. can do it anymore through email, websites, you know, send the card back, whatever, but call them, but don't leave people hanging about yes. what's coming or not. Yes. It's so stressful. Yes. <laughs> I love our members, but it is something that we work hard at every day to get them <laughs> call in advance. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for sure. I can. I feel your pain there, man. Yes. That's, that's rough. Yes. You just never know. Uh, yes. Yeah. So definitely I, I can see where it would be fun, you know, but also, um, very stressful. Um, yes. The, the bigger the event, the more stressful it is. Yeah. And you are coordinating so many people. Yes. Um, you know, in so many moving parts. So, um, yeah. So when you were in class, I did not send you this question, but when you were in class in the fall, you talked a little about, bit about um, the different career options that are available yeah. in this industry. Would you mind to touch on a few of those, even though sure. we didn't talk about that? Um, no, no. It's talk about some of the, the things that you shared with my class in the fall. Yeah, actually. So I have the PowerPoint that I did in the oh, fall. Oh, perfect. So I'm just gonna perfect. Pull that up. Perfect. Um, so there are several things you can go into when you go to college um, to be in the hospitality industry. You can study. The first thing is you can study hospitality management. Um, you can do public relations, which is what I did, marketing, advertising, business administration, hotel management, international business. So there's so many different things you can major in and still get into the hospitality management. Um, and then a couple of different careers. I mean, it could be anything really. You could work at a hotel, you could work at a restaurant, even things like athletics have hospitality jobs. Um, you know, big stadiums like the St. Louis Cardinals, they have an event coordinator and planner, or the Fox Theater has an event coordinator and planner. You know, all of those big things that we think of. Walt Disney World has probably hundreds of event planners. Um, so really anything. I mean, even apartment complexes have event coordinators and planners. Yeah, that's the thing. I think that there are a lot of different routes that you can take and the skill set that you talked about is transferable no matter which area. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, you know, so, so that's what's really, really neat about that. So um, my final question for you today, okay. is, um, what advice would you give to um, a junior or senior at Marion High School today? Or if you could travel back in time, um, what would you want Haley Smith to know um, when she was at Marion High School? Okay, so it's sort of a two part advice thing. I've thought a lot about this. Um, first would be to take every opportunity you can um, and do whatever you can to make those opportunities available to yourself. If I could go back to college, one thing I would do is study abroad. I so wish I had, but I just, I never did. Um, so if you have the opportunity to study abroad or work at the Disney program, you know, do all those things. Take every experience because knowledge and experience is never wasted um, and you can never get too much of it. Mm -hmm. My second piece of advice um, would be to enjoy every season of life that you are in. I think the seniors can relate to this and speak to this perfectly at this time. Um, your season of life that you're in can be over in a moment's notice. So enjoy being in high school and then enjoy being in college. You know, we all want to grow up so fast and we can't wait to turn 18 and then 21 and, you know, get older and older and then 
you know, you look back and you're like, wait, I wasted all those years <laughs> wishing to be older. And so just take the time to enjoy the season that you're in. Very good advice. Very wise. Uh, yeah. So good that you figured that out at your age rather than at 40 or 50. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thankfully, thankfully. Yes. Well, Haley, thank you so much for joining uh, me and my students today. I, I can't wait to share this with them. And um, I appreciate you. And I hope you get back to planning all kinds of fun events um, in person <laughs> for people very soon. <laughs> yes, thank you. It was so fun to talk right. to you again. Thank you. You're welcome.